2020, 2021 as a year it has been intense and crazy and never to be repeated. It's, it's been a tricky year. Um, we've been very lucky here. We're just so delighted to be back up and running. I think we've had a really interesting year. Obviously, um, the COVID year has been very difficult for so many people, but I think the Royal Court has risen to the challenge amazingly. Lockdown was interesting because during it, you forget what working in the theatre is about. I forgot how exciting being in a theatre is. One hundred and forty-four summer school workshops. One hundred and thirty-six youth theatre sessions. Eight hundred and seventeen one-to-one -one meetings during lockdown. Zero shows. No choir performances. No meetings. More than 350,000 online views. tickets sold 18 performances 45,000 YouTube views back in March 2020 we were watching television uh, waiting to find out what would happen uh, after coronavirus hit uh, the announcement when it came was not that theatres must close, it was that people shouldn't go to theatres and bars and restaurants, uh, which was spectacularly unhelpful. We had a show on at the time called Pete Price is Dead. It had only just opened, it opened on the Friday night. Uh, and then we, like the rest of the country, shut down. It was really difficult for all of the staff, for the audiences, for everybody, and people were scared. Throughout it all, we stayed in contact via Zoom, um, or the heads of departments every week. Um, I kept all the staff updated, which we were all really grateful for. Initially, there was a real focus on how do you sustain the organisation? What do you do when it literally has to shut down overnight? So a very quick focus on business planning and raising money in. And then there was an immediate focus on audiences. We do have a really regular and loyal audience who the theatre means an awful lot to. So we did do something um, called calls from creatives and we called the elderly audience members just to check in on them, see how they're getting on, like a lot went on. We were involved in charity work, cooking food for the West Everton Food Bank. Uh, we were roughly doing about 100 meals um, a week. Just before we uh, had to finish for the pandemic, we had an average of 200 people registered on our books and an average of 100 people each week coming to sing with us um, at the theatre. The pandemic made us cancel our sessions, of course. Without panicking too much, we decided very quickly to um, adapt to going online. Quite a lot of our members struggle already, as they've told us, with technology. We didn't want it to make it more complicated for them, so we decided to do pre-recorded sessions instead. Over the past year, we've had about 3,000 hits. Every week we produced a video pre-recorded on YouTube, which was sent uh, as a private link to our members. I know that throughout, uh, Miriam and the community team have really worked hard to communicate with the young people. Well, during the pandemic, it was quite difficult for our young people because they couldn't go out, um, they couldn't be with the family and friends, so they found it quite difficult to try and keep them occupied. So my role was to phone them each week engage with them, make sure they're keeping their mind occupied. A lot of young people are suffering from anxiety and stress and just worrying about everyday things in their life and how are they going to get back to it. So for me, phoning them each week was so important because when I was talking to the parents, they were saying they look forward to your phone call because they haven't got that contact. It hasn't been easy for a lot of the youth theatre. We did a lot of Zoom calls. Um, and a lot of just keeping in contact through WhatsApp messages um, coming in when lockdown did start to ease. Things started to ease a little bit early on in the summer. We were able to run the youth theatre inside the theatre. So we managed to uh, work with 66 kids, all socially distanced, and that was fantastic. And just having the space to do that, which me, it has meant when the theatre hasn't been open, we've been able to use the whole building. Because the theatre was open, 
the young people started to come back and they couldn't wait to get back because they could see all the friends and just generally having a chit chat about what was going on in their life. We've had great grants and support from the, from the Arts Council so that was fantastic because you know you're looking down the battle of a gun it's a lot of times this is a big building you know it we always felt as board members well it's it's, it's got to survive really come hell or high water it, it's got to survive. We had a couple of trial nights in the uh, auditorium with socially distanced seating and then we felt we were confident enough to put on a socially distanced Christmas show. Now this was all made possible because of the uh, Cultural Recovery Fund funding came through the Arts Council. With the knowledge that a, a, a positive test or uh, someone going into isolation could cost you a whole show, uh, we came up with the idea of running two casts. It was good to be open and we had people crying in the audience, the fact that they were back in the theatre. It was just so nice to see people coming through the doors and to see that the desire to come to the theatre was still there. We were lucky enough to be able to open for three weeks. Um, we had obviously planned to open for a lot longer till the end of January but we were stopped, I think it was the end of this very end of December, just before New Year. Again the country went into lockdown. So Christmas was a, a a peak for us in an otherwise fairly barren year. The government have put in place a roadmap that uh, from the end of June there'd be no more social distancing. Knowing that this uh, virus has been so unpredictable, we thought, right, let's sell to 50% capacity, socially distanced houses. We've looked at exactly what do we need to make the building safe for people to come back if you're visiting the theatre, so you have to come through stage door, you've got to do your test if you haven't already done one, you've got to sign in uh, with an electronic signing in device. Ellen and Rigby sold incredibly well, it's so many shows were sold out at our 50% capacity uh, that we ended up extending for a week, um, which did really well. And we tried with the extension week, no social distancing in the stores, stalls, but socially distanced in the circle. So when we had our first full capacity show of Alan and Rigby, uh, it felt great to have the audience full again. It feels more like the rural court that we knew before the pandemic. I think to think there's going to be an audience again, you know, hopefully full packed, it would be, you know, it'd be amazing after everything that's happened. When you've made this your, your life, you know, and it is the energy that flows through you is performance. And it is about getting to the people and them getting to you. When it's not there, it's like a dark place. As the social media officer, the last few months have been a lot easier. You've got a lot more content to use, things are happening again. Everyone's glad to be back, all the staff are glad to be back, the customers are glad that we're open again. The buzz of the theatre is starting to come back as well, which is really good. It's just been brilliant really, it's just been back to normal. We had a crazy opening, we had tons of people coming in, tons of service, so that created a brilliant atmosphere. Just that lovely feeling of being able to go and have a night out, to share some laughs, to be in a theatre space and to remind ourselves what it's all about. We've been able to run our summer school which is free to access and it's um, open to anyone. So I think we've worked with over a hundred young people. So if you were to come to the summer school you'd do songwriting, singing, uh, capoeira, dance, um, you'd be writing, you'd be playing instruments, playing the guitar, playing the piano and uh, you, you'd be doing lots of collaborating and, and creating. My favourite is dance because um, I really like dance since I was younger and my mum was a dancer. I like coming to summer school because um, I've got like, loads of friends here and and it opens a lot of opportunities in the future. Access All Areas is a fantastic new um, collaboration project between four organisations in Liverpool, led by the Royal Court, Positive Impact, the Liverpool Caparera Project and Catalyst Performing Arts. It's a mixture of dance, drama, um, singing, songwriting, uh, playing instruments, the whole caboodle really. That takes us up to almost present day where we we finally able to put the Christmas show on sale with confidence and that was a glorious day when so many people tried to book the website crashed um, which was terrible but very exciting but it's so nice to see that people really want to come and it's it's people's Christmas tradition we are now the producing theatre that we were a year and a half two years ago 
it's what everyone's geared up to do. I think people just have a real thirst to come back and I think it's a, a credit to the theatre that that's how they feel and that's what's happening. We made a lot of people smile and a lot of people happy and that's the main thing but we just can't wait to get back into our theatre and sing the songs that we love. Looking ahead to next year, to 2022, we're very excited to have a full year of programming, uh, to have shows programmed as they always used to be here, which is one finishes on the Saturday night, we've got the next one starting the next Friday, turn it around quick, but it's going to be exciting. Fingers crossed, everything will go to plan and we will never have to close the theatre again.